All right, so from the Retirement Insight and Trends website, which uh, I'm relatively new to, uh, well, even though this was dated April 11, 2017, we have change in household spending after retirement results from a longitudinal sample, which means they actually followed real live human beings other than using a computer model. Uh, our man Sadipo Panerjee, PhD, uh, from the EBRI. Now, I've talked about Sadipo before because he's a guy who did a study on, uh, oh, there we go, sweet. Uh, he's a guy who uh, did a study on the H HRS, a health and retirement survey from the University of Michigan, talked about the health cost of real life people as they age. And that was uh, revolutionary for sure. So let's make sure Pavel is not up to any kind of sneaky thing. All right. Introduction. Spending is one of the crucial economic factors in retirement. I would actually say it's the crucial thing. So it's very important to understand the spending patterns of retired households and the causes that drive their spending behavior. Understanding spending patterns, not, patterns will not only help current retirees succeed, but will also help policymakers. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. This report attempts to quantify, quantify how household spending changes in the immediate years following retirement. Uh, I have shown this same guy uh, that spending declines for retired households as they age. Those age trends in spending have been derived uh, from cross-sectional samples, but this study has used panel data to track the changes in retirement spending for a fixed group of households. The standard economic model of life cycle consumption predicts consumption smoothing over a person's lifetime. In other words, it predicts consumption is continuous throughout retirement and does not drop. However, the evidence of that is mixed. I say more than mixed. It's a counter to that. Uh, some folks have shown that British households have reduced consumption precisely at the ages associated with retirement. A couple other people have shown that U.S. households also reduce certain components of consumption sharply following retirement. This apparent contradiction between the life cycle model and, the, and measured behavior is referred to as a retirement consumption model. On the other hand, a couple other folks find that non-durable consumption remains unchanged at retirement. So they conclude there's no evidence of retirement consumption puzzle. Uh, Heard and Rodweiler, who I cite quite a bit actually, report small declines in household consumption over retirement and argue that these changes are compatible with the life cycle model. This report does not make any attempt to test the validity of the life cycle model. Again, the life cycle model is that you consume just goes up each and every year with inflation and doesn't drop. Rather, using more recent and higher quality data, it documents the spending changes that U.S. households actually make in the years following retirement. And results clearly show the average and median household spending declines in retirement, although some households do have an increased spending as well. There's two sources for this data are the HRS, the Health and Retirement Study, which is a, uh, a national representative sample of U.S. households with individuals over 50. It is the most comprehensive survey of older Americans in the nation, and it covers topics such as health, assets, income, and labor force in detail. It is a biennial long longitudinal survey with questionnaire waves and even numbered years, which started in 1992. The initial sample consisted of individuals born in 1931 and 1941 and their spouses regardless of birth. Newer cohorts have been added in the following years, and the study is sponsored by the National Institute of Aging and the SSA, Social Security Administration. The other data is from CAMS, the Consumption Activities Mail Survey, which started in 2001 as a supplement to the HRS, the Health and Retirement Survey. Or study from the participants in the 2000 HRS, 5,000 households were selected at random and mailed a questionnaire. In couple th households, in couple of married or you know, two people households, the questionnaire is sent randomly to one of the two spouses. Since 2001, CAMS has been conducted every two years. With 2013, uh, the latest round of data. Again, this is from 2017. Uh, let's see here. Let's keep going down. We got spending categories. Uh, so for this reason, this report uses CAMS from 2005 through 2006, 5th, 13, because they've actually expanded the spending categories. All right, so uh, let's see. We're not going to go through the definition. So let's just go to the changing right here. Right here. Total household spending in 2013 dollars in the year surrounding retirement. Mortgage principal payments not included. Because mortgage principal payment is actually considered, believe it or not, is considered an investment. You're paying into your principal, i.e. you're paying it down, which is increasing your equity. 
Figure 1A shows a change in total household spending in the years following retirement. Both average and median midpoint spending levels are reported. The pre-retirement average and median household are $56,000 and $46,000 respectively. The average is $56,000, the median is $46,000. After one to two years of retirement, the average drops to $51,000 and the median drops to $44,000. So basically, yeah, it's roughly 10% decline on the average and the median. So the first year, two years of retirement, average household spending drops by 7.7% and median household spending drops by 5.5%. All right, a little bit less than what I said, but uh, either way, it drops. The decline in average household spending continues the following years. By the sixth year of retirement, uh, average household spending dropped by 14.7% and median household spending dropped by another four, by also by 14%. Again, mortgage principal payments are not included in, in your spending habits, because, which I think is actually even more beneficial because it shows you as you pay off your mortgage, uh, you're, you're building up equity for sure. So they're saying, look, it's almost like a balance sheet equation. A credit and a debit, a debit. We're crediting your cash account and we're debiting your investment account. Uh, but that doesn't change the fact you don't want a mortgage because that's still outgoing that you need to find. You need to finance with some kind of income in which you have to pay tax on the income. Uh, reductions do slow down after the fourth year of retirement. For example, by the fourth year of retirement, average spending drops by 13.6% of pre-retirement spending, which means the additional drop in the fifth to sixth year is only 1.1 percentage points. Similarly, for median spending, the spending falls quickly at first and then slows down. Uh, figures 1A and 1B are from marital status. So here's single people. Uh, Pre-retirement, uh, the average is 36,000. The median is 29,000. After five to six years, the average is 31,000. And the uh, median is 24,000. So again, that drops by $5,000 off a uh, lower amount uh, for couples pre-retirement is 63,000 and 54,000. It drops by $12,000 after the first six years of retirement on average for the, uh, the couples. And then it drops by almost $10,000 uh, in the median. That's nuts. Uh, let's see. One uh, C shows uh, household pre-retirement income quartile. So we'll see the only quartile where the income actually increases is in the bottom 25%. And there, it, it goes down until the, the eighth, the fifth and sixth years, excuse me. Everyone else, the 75th percent drops quite a bit. So it's interesting that it does go up in the sixth, fifth and sixth year for the uh, bottom quartile. I'm not sure what to make of that. Um, let's see what they say. Uh, and look at this. For the top income quartile, household spending drops by 7.2% in the first year and 19.9% by the sixth year of retirement. Uh, durable spending consists of only five durable goods, and appropriately, the median expenditure is zero before and after retirement. The average goes down in retirement, by, but by either measure, durables can constitute a very small portion of total spending. As might be expected, durable uh, spending is higher for higher income group. It broadly goes down for all income groups as households enter retirement. Although, although there are slight increases the fifth and sixth years to the bottom half, so that, that would be representative there. Non-durables can constitute the bulk of spending and the declines in this category are in line with the decline in total spending, although slightly higher in percentage terms. For example, the first two years of retirement, median non-durable spending goes down by 6.3%. By the sixth year, median non-durable spending is down 17.4%. That's crazy. Transportation spending shows the highest spending reduction in the first year of retirement. This is expected because you're no longer commuting. It makes sense. Average transportation spending dropped from 13000 to 10000 a 21% drop in the first two years of retirement. Housing, the final set of housing is uh, spending is on housing, which as noted earlier, excludes mortgage payments, principal payments, mortgage principal payments. Median spending on housing during the first two years of retirement drops uh, from 9000 to 8000 bucks, but by 32%, hold on just a second. This report does not consider mortgage principal payments as spending, uh, hence, those payments are not included in housing or total spending. For the reasons mentioned above, some people may still view the payments as an expense since they have to write a check each month to the mortgage lender. Consequently, it would help to know how much uh, households with a mortgage are paying down the mortgage principal and therefore gaining equity in retirement. The median payment on a mortgage principal is $21.98 pre-retirement but drops to zero after retirement. 
Figure 6B shows the change in average principal payments by income quartiles. Not surprisingly, payments are higher for higher income groups. Yep. Now, spending does not decrease for everyone. <laughs> well, it's shocking there. Uh, let's see. During the first two years of retirement, 46% of households actually spend more than their pre-retirement level levels. This number goes down as they move deeper into retirement, though. After three or four years of retirement, more than two in five households spent more than their pre-retirement levels. And after six years of retirement, 33% still spent more than their pre-retirement levels. It's not necessarily the case that the same household spent more than their pre-retirement levels at all those years, exactly. A possible explanation could be that people want to splurge as they enter retirement and travel, uh, spending on hobbies. If such spending were a function of income, it might be expected that those who spent more on their pre-retirement levels are concentrated at the top of the income distribution, but that's not the case. All right, I'll, I'll let you uh, read all this, but I just, uh, conclusion. A person's financial success of retirement depends on two components, savings accumulated during working years and spending during work and year, during retirement years. Quantifying those two components and the underlying behavior is essential to understanding how people are likely to succeed in retirement. This focus, this uh, report focuses on spending in retirement by documenting how household spending changes in the years following retirement and analyzing patterns of a fixed group of households up to six years of retirement. And what we find, household spending dropped at the beginning of retirement uh, significantly, actually. I mean, it's just all there is to it. Uh, I just, I find that pretty interesting. So um, the median household had a mortgage payment before retirement, but none after retirement. So when you throw in the mortgage payment, it's going to even be that much better. Because, again, they're not using the mortgage as part of the spending, which I think is bad. Because I say, look, if I'm paying $3,000 a month on a mortgage in retirement, right before I retire, then five years after retirement, I don't have the mortgage anymore. Uh, that's a significant spending that is no longer there. Anyway, I'll put a link to the show notes. I'm a big fan of this, uh, of this stuff. And it just goes to show you there's no right or way to answer this, but we do need to analyze. It, and most of the evidence shows that spending goes down as you age and get in retirement. All right, thanks, Dan.